Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Open Source Tonight. Folks, I have got some great open source software to show you, as usual. It's Raspberry Pi OS, but for the desktop. Let's go take a look. All right, so here we are on the desktop. I've increased the fonts to make it a little easier for you at home to see, especially if you're on a mobile device or whatever. And so we can look at some different things here, like let's look at what the kernel is that it's, oh, I thought that would have increased the text on the terminal too. It did not. So let's just fix that to match everybody else's font here real quick. There we go, and I typed you name wrong. All right, so we're gonna type you name dash, oh, forgot the U that time. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, if we make this bigger, you can see there is, still feels smaller, there. So we can see we're running 5.10.0-26-686-PAE. I'm actually not sure what the three letters there is for. If anyone knows, tell me. I, I could Google it. I probably should Google it. So I know that this hasn't been updated in a while. This is a virtual machine. This is not a Raspberry Pi, even though it might look like it. This is actually x86 hardware that we're talking about here. And so like if I do ls PCI, and I'll just type that into less real quick, we can see if I wouldn't see Intel stuff on a... Um, now, would you, on a Raspberry Pi, you can see different things here. Let's see. Oh, that's right. I can... Oh, I made it too big for the... Okay. Oh, it actually didn't put out as much as I thought. But anyway, the point of the matter is that you can see that it's actually seeing stuff that makes sense for a, a, a regular system. A regular system. Let's see. CPU info, I believe, is in here, isn't it? Is it not? There was some way to get CPU info on Linux. I forget what it is. Anyway, but let's run the updates because like I said a minute ago before I interrupted that thought, there is some on this system. And as you can see, 62 updates. So let's run those. This is based on Debian. I'm going to have to zoom this out a little bit because it's just, for some reason, it's not wanting to show. Why does it not want to show? Oh, hold on. I think I got the screen resolution set wrong too, actually. So as you might have guessed, I'm not exactly an expert on the way this stuff works. Um, <laughs> Y'all notice that? Let's see, resolution, 1920 by 1200. Okay, I want 1080. Do we not have 1080? Um, I don't think we do. Uh, hmm. Okay, well that's kind of annoying. Uh, 1600 by 1200, I think will still work and look decent. Let's see what's that. Oh, it reboots it. It's been a while since I changed the screen resolution, so I don't even remember that. But anyway, we'll reboot the uh, the system here. It's running off an SSD, and I find it boots very quick. Three, two, one, we're on the desktop. Okay, that's not uh, the same asterisk ratio. I was thinking that might be a little different. But anyway, this will work, I guess. Um, so, but anyway, so if we run our upgrades again, now you can see all of them. And I'll hit Y for yes. And there we go. So anyway, this is, as you might expect, basically very similar to what you get on a Pi. There is some differences. I mean, we don't have Firefox on here like they do in the latest, um, the latest build of the Raspberry Pi OS for actual Raspberry Pis. We've got the ability to update our packages here. Now, I don't think this will work because it's probably going to try and update while these are running. Oh, I guess it does. Okay, it must have stored it separately. I think this is like Synaptic Package Manager that they've reskinned or something. Let's see, about, they'd probably tell me. Oh, no, this is actually a different thing. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, security update. Please make plans to either upgrade to Bookworm or switch to using the Firefox browser. Okay. Well, I was about to say literally before that came up that you can install Firefox, and I prefer Firefox. I'm just playing with this VM, but let's install it actually. I'll show you how to install that. It's it's really easy. In fact, actually, I think we can probably install it from this utility. If we search, it probably will not let me. Um, well, I guess it did. Let's see, Firefox. We're looking for just Firefox ESR. Maybe if I just put Firefox dash ESR, I mean that. Would probably make it come up, wouldn't it? Let's find out. Yeah, here we go. So I can just hit check, because this is based on Debian. So this is actually what Debian ships, as far as I know, is the extended um, support release, the ESR release, which for somebody like me that really doesn't care about the latest and greatest features anyway, I'm fine with that. So we can go ahead and check that and 
So anyway, I can't really probably install this until this is done. But anyway, we'll come back to that. We can look around. I mean, you got the same kind of file explorer, right? We got the same kind of thing like that. And I, I'm guessing they've got the desktop actually, because I installed this weeks ago. I guess they've got the, um, let me open another one of those. I'm guessing they have got now the uh, latest version of Debian that it's based on instead of the uh, the older one now. So let's find out if I can get, um, what? Oh, don't sign in. I was about to say I was confused there. It's been a while since I've used Chrome, everybody. Oh, that's nice. You're gonna take me right over here. So let's see, uh, software, and I should be able to get the desktop image. Here we go. What is the desktop image based on now? Does it tell me? Bullseye, okay. Isn't that what it's based on now? <laughs> I don't, let's see, the packages. Debian 11 is Bullseye, if I remember right. So let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, Debian 11, okay. So it's literally giving us a thing, but we can't actually move away from it right now. Um, so that I mean, that's clearly what you need to do if you actually are running this on your desktop for security reasons. You do want to have Firefox, which I mean, I like Firefox better anyway these days. But we'll go ahead and install it this way. Oh, I forgot I was going to show you over here. Well, anyway, you can do it. I was, you know, I would have, but my natural one seems to install through the terminal. So anyway, it's going to install it here. And if we wait a second, up in here on internet, there it is, it's already there. Click, should go back and the icon should be there now. There it goes. So this is, this is Firefox. I would like to get rid of this thing right here. I do not like that little thing there, it's annoying me. Um, so yeah, we can turn the menu bar on if you want one of those. And you know, it's Firefox, right? I mean, you get the idea. So, there you go, we can go to Google dot com and it should pull right up for example there we go all right so and you, one thing i will say i like about this is it opens really fast like if i close this terminal and i open it it opens real quick but that's not even just now that's when it's a fresh install and if we show updates in here this is the update thing i don't think we really need that because it should be good to go so let's try restarting so we'll go over here to the logout i was showing you there and reboot my audio is not out of sync, by the way, in case you were wondering. I'm just talking fast, as usual. All right, we're gonna let it boot back up and let's see what happens. There we go. It does not think it has updates. So as I suspected, it that was just an old thing. We can look around here. It's got VLC on here. I can't remember, I might've actually installed that myself. Oh, that's kind of weird looking. Um, I don't think it's expecting this screen aspect ratio. Uh, can I close this? Um, no, just the, let's see, close window. Yeah, there we go. So it's it's being a little funky. It was working fine until I changed the screen resolution. I don't think a lot of this stuff wants to work on the, yeah, so this, <laughs> maybe I should have just kept it on 16, uh, or not 16, you know what, let's just go back and we're gonna just set it back to 16 by 10 because at this point, it would at least be better. <laughs> uh, 1920 by 1200. Yes. So this video is 1920 by 1080, and so it will not match perfectly with what you see on your screen, but it'll be close, and it'll actually be just a little bit bigger. Um, I'll try not to put stuff at the very bottom because this is getting very annoying. So let's see if we open stuff now, what do we get? We should get things like VLC to hopefully cooperate a little. Whoa, okay, maybe we've discovered some bugs with this because this is not what it's supposed to do. Anyway, everybody, <laughs> I guess we won't be doing that, but you know, again, it's Raspberry Pi OS and every sort of the way I could do a six hour video on this. Um, you know, this is a pretty cool thing they've got in here. I thought it was interesting. Like you can set up to remotely basically manage pies and everything. Well, everybody, thanks for watching Open Source tonight. Folks, I gotta tell you, there's not much to say about Raspberry Pi OS, but I do like it. If you like Debian, it is basically just Debian with the Raspberry Pi desktop on it. And so if that's something that you like, it might be the operating system for you to install on your laptop or your desktop. For me, I like it. I like how snappy it is and responsive. It's definitely lighter on RAM in my experience than some other stuff. So maybe if that you're looking for a more lean system when it comes to RAM usage, you might go with this. I happen to have some systems here that I don't have a lot of RAM in that I kind of tinker with. Maybe I'll put it on one of those. But like my desktop, I'm gonna keep running Rocky with the GNOME desktop on it because I like that better for that kind of thing. 
But anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching. Goodbye, everybody. And action.